Hey everybody, and welcome to another Interstellar Modeler. Well, in this video, what we're going to do is revisit the Space 1999 Eagle Transporter. This is the 148 scale model by MPC in round 2. And uh, instead of going through the entire build with you, uh, because I've already done that, I'm just going to concentrate on some of the extra things I'm going to be doing with lighting. Now, if you recall, in the first build, I lit the cockpit, which is what I'm going to be doing this time as well. But in addition, I'm going to be adding some lights along the landing gear, as well as putting a lamp over each of the doors of the passenger pod. Now, this uh, type of lighting was not seen in the original studio miniature, but uh, I started to gather interest in this uh, after seeing some people do it with their own Eagle. There, in fact, is a kit now available for the landing gear that you can purchase. However, we will not be utilizing that kit here with this project. Take a second just to show you the kit that is available. And uh, as you can see, the lights are mounted as they would be on traditional aircraft. What I'd like to do, however, is go for something a little bit different, and mine will be more for aesthetics or just for additional lighting around the Eagle. So what I plan to do is to add and use chip size SMD lights that will shine downward onto the landing gear. Now one other effect I am toying with is to add a strobe effect to two of the pods, maybe this one and this one. And so when the uh, strobes are lit, they will flash uh, alternately from one to the other pod there. Now I've actually already started on this, so let me go and show you what I've done so far. The first step that I did was to add the lighting over the doors. Now please excuse my crude drawing here, but I wanted to show you the concept first. Uh, what I wanted to do was to provide a light source that would shine down on doorways in this manner, so in a darker environment, you'd see this light glowing down like that. Now, you'll have to excuse me, I did not have my camera on hand to record this. In fact, I didn't really wasn't sure it was going to work or not. And by the time I was done, you know, everything was already in place. So, uh, let me just show you how I went about it. Uh, the side panel of the, or the wall, I should say, of the passenger pod and the upper section connect in this way. So, my idea was to take a pin vise, drill a small hole uh, big enough for our uh, pico size light. And so, I drill a hole this way and then... Um, horizontally over this way, and that way we could feed the light through, mount it here, and hopefully it would shine down on the doorway. So let me just show you what that looks like now. Now before I light this, let me just show you a few things here. Uh, you can see the small hole drill here and here, and the light is fed through and mounted. Uh, now this is the tricky part is that, and it's one of the reasons I didn't record this, because you have to feed the light through to this hole first, and then through this hole here, and then you slide in the wall and then I used super glue to adjoin the, the uh, pieces together, and that way it could dry quickly. Placed glue here. Once that was dried, I used epoxy putty, which is what this black blob is here. And that gives us some extra anchorage so that we can manipulate this wire as we need to, and that way you don't have to worry about yanking it out of place. Now I should say that the pieces were primed first with a light gray primer, and um, I was using that duple color primer. And then I did all of this. And uh, then I painted it white, which is why you see this one strip that's unpainted here. And I figured I wasn't going to worry about that. I had to cover this light so it didn't want to paint it. And uh, we're going to be seeing the eagle from this vantage point anyway, so you wouldn't really be able to see that. Now, I had figured that the primer and the paint would be enough to light block this section, but guess what? It's not. So I had to go back and apply some black paint here and uh, then reapply the white color over that. All right, so here we have now the effect, and I'm very pleased with it. So you can see there's still a tiny bit of light leakage there, but I'm going to leave it as is. I just don't want to take the risk of damaging what I've done here. Also bear in mind that as you view things on video, uh, they do tend to uh, look a bit brighter on video. It's not quite as bleached out as you see here. The effect is uh, fairly subtle in person. Uh, so overall, I'm really, really pleased with the way everything is looking here. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and move on now to the landing gear. All right, so first thing I did was to drill a 5 64th inch hole that's positioned 9 millimeters from this edge. And this is all situated towards the front edge of the landing gear. If you recall, the lighting kit that is available looks like this. And you can see the lights are shining more directly at us here, much like they would, again, with traditional aircraft. But the effect I'm after is going to look like this. I have one temporarily wired. And you can see instead the light is directed downward towards the landing gear. All right, let me take a second to show you how I'm mounting these uh, chip lights. So the light comes like this, and it's already pre-wired with a resistor. And what we need to do is mount this into the hole that we've drilled for the light. So what I decided to do was just to glue this chip light onto a piece of styrene plastic I've cut to fit into this section. So I just use super glue to hold it into place, and then we'll apply 
regular cement here and here, and once, it, once it's in place, it's going to look like this. So once this is dried, I'm going to light block this because you'll still get light shining through this white piece of plastic. And even though I've um, applied black paint on the interior of the pod, I just want to make sure we don't get any sort of glow from that light. So I'm going to use uh, tulip paint, which I've shown you before, is this stuff here. It's basically fabric paint, and it goes on nice and thick, and it won't allow the light to shine through. Okay, guys, this is the... Uh, kit I'm going to be using to create the strobe effect. This was purchased from modeltrainsoftware.com. As you know, I'm a big fan of theirs. Uh, they have a lot of options, and this is just one of many available. If you look on their site, they have this kit uh, advertised with six uh, chip size lights that alternate from one side to the other. I contacted them and told them I didn't need six, so they were willing to design one with just two. And uh, this is what it looks like. You have the two lights here wired into this circuit with the two leads and they provide a hookup for a 9-volt battery along with the switch. Now the one thing I wish I had told them sooner was uh, that I needed a bit extra wire, um, so I'm going to have to extend this and modify this by snipping this here and adding some more wire so we can get it to span from one side of the eagle to the other. Now the idea then is to have a strobe effect that will alternate from the front port side to the rear starboard side, and so Looking at the pod, I figured this was the most logical place to mount it. So I drilled a hole here with a small drill bit. And then I light blocked it with some tulip paint. And after that was dried, I applied some silver paint to enhance the illumination. Because uh, I did test it, and you could see a little bit of light glow through the plastic. So you did have to light block that. And um, the effect actually looks pretty good. So this is going to be wired into a separate switch so that we can turn it off. Again, this is not an effect seen on a TV show. This is just something I came up with I thought would look cool. Okay guys, what you're seeing here now is a picture of an eagle that I found online. I'm not sure who the builder was, but he did an excellent job at detailing the surface. Now if you look closely here at the pods, you'll see these lines here that he's drawn onto them. And uh, there have been a few other people that uh, I've actually corresponded with on Facebook that have done the same thing. And essentially the way they accomplish this is with a very fine tip pencil. So what I decided to do is to use a mechanical pencil. You can find these at Staples. And uh, the lead is 0.5 millimeter lead HP darkness. Again, you can find this at any Staples or office supply store. And uh, taking a ruler like this, placing it against the surface and drawing out the lines. Now in order to hold it steady, because obviously you're dealing with different angles here, I'm using this vise. And the vise has this ball joint here, allows you to rotate what you have pinned into the vise. And uh, so I'm just rotating it along here and getting a nice flat even surface so that I can um, position the ruler and uh, draw my lines. So let me just show you an example. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw a uh, vertical line here bisecting this triangle area. And you just draw along the surface, again, just gliding very gently, and there you have your line. Now, if you do make a mistake, one thing I would recommend is having a white eraser like this. This also comes in a pencil form uh, that allows you to extend the eraser as you're using it. I just don't have one of those available, but uh, again, just make it a white eraser like this. And um, remember, you're not drawing a heavy line, so it doesn't take much to get rid of the excess line. Um, so just rub gently on the surface and you will get rid of the, uh, of the pencil marking. All right, and here we have a couple examples. I really do like the way they've turned out. Uh, once I am completed here, I'm going to go ahead and apply a dull coat so that the panel lines won't rub off. One suggestion might be to try this on a other piece of plastic first, just so you get the hang of how much pressure to apply. Again, I emphasize you don't really need a lot of pressure. Uh, you want a nice, thin line. Now, the other thing you're probably noticing here are the markings that you see on the pod. These are not included with the model kit. Uh, again, inspired by John Wilson's model, I saw that he had these unique markings here, and I thought they looked really nice. So I thought I'd go to my computer and give a try at creating them uh, with Photoshop. So I just uh, created some geometric designs that resemble the markings that you see here and put them on decal paper. 
Now, I'd encourage you to try this. In fact, I'm willing to provide the file to you for free uh, if you're a subscriber of mine. So contact me here at interstellarmodeler at gmail.com. Also, encourage you to check out the Facebook page, Space1999 Props and Ships. The files are there as well. Now, this particular decal paper I got from a seller on eBay. It was recommended by a friend of mine, and uh, it actually ships from the UK, so it takes a little time to get to you. But in comparison to other decal paper I've tried, I think it works really well uh, and better than any of the other ones I've tried. Now, the other thing you're going to need is a, a bonder, and so I'm just using Tester's decal bonder. And essentially, this uh, paper is made for an inkjet printer. You just run it through your printer. Um, you give it a little time to dry and um, then you spray the decal bonder. I applied two light coats, allowed it to dry overnight, and then the decals are ready to go the next day. And again, I think they really add some nice detailing here to the ship. So uh, give it a shot. Uh, I think you might be surprised how easy it is. All right, guys, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here since it's getting a little long. Uh, I will then complete the project in part two. Um, if you have any questions of what I've done up to now, feel free to contact me here on my YouTube channel or at InnerstellarModeler at gmail.com. Thanks again for watching. I always appreciate it, and I'll see you then in part two. Take care.